I read this memo article. I don't know what you want to call it. Is this something that you've shared with with people? Well, Jerry Maguire would call it a manifesto. <laughs> you know what was that line? For the it's not. It's a memo, a mission statement. No, yeah. I. You know he. I just. It was kind of a bit of a rant, but um, yeah. You know, I, I let you it know. Was very succinct. I wouldn't call well, it a rant. So um, it started off by saying, you know, you really start thinking about what's a project. A project is a promise. Right. It really is about coordinating the unknowable future events to deliver something of value. And I think that's what started me off really seeing things a little different. I mean, let's think about it, Khalil. We project manage just so many things in our daily lives. You know, the meeting last week that we had was um, was a project. Right. There was airlines, there was traffic, there was weather, there was rides to coordinate. I don't care if you're building a permanent skyscraper building or it's the next podcast you and I are planning yeah. um, or, or you're cooking dinner for guests. It's, it's got to be managed. There's always an uncertainty because, you know, the truth is we're, we're dancing with future random events, often with other people, or like I said, the variables out of, uh, out of our control. Um, and there's a need for management of all of that because, you know, if you just leave the events to their own devices, you're probably not going to like the outcome, right? So it requires, um, and I think in the business event, particularly in the trade show space, um, the unpredictable nature of future events means there's very often going to be speed bumps. And that's the business that we're in. Um, so much of what we do is just, you know, we're paid to really respond because you can't control. There's no project manager, right, that has a perfect record. And um, what I liked that um, Seth Godin had said was, um, why isn't there a perfect record? Because the cost of being completely perfect in the face of the unknown is too high, right? He's not saying it can't be done, but what it would cost to make sure we cover for every contingency when you're out, you know, on site at some event venue, they just, we, they couldn't afford to hire us if we really were going to, you know, get the risk down to just fractional or single digit numbers. So, well, and when I heard that, Chris, yeah, I actually didn't think the line was, uh, I'll, I'll reset it. I know you just said it, but, um, no project manager has a perfect record because the cost of being completely perfect in the face of unknown of the unknown is too high. Yes. And i actually didn't even think about it from a revenue standpoint. I mean, I totally understand that, that it, it, you would have to pay an enormous amount of money to have everything go perfectly. But even just the toll that it takes on your mental capacity on not being able to be with your family because you're dealing with so much, uh, the project management space, it even yeah. got me thinking about just the start of this manifesto <laughs> that right. you wrote in a project is a promise. And really for the person that you're taking over for whether, it, whether you're the project manager or whether you're just managing a portion of that project, you've promised to do that. And what that's doing is it's giving them those costly things back. They're getting their time back with their family. They're getting the capacity to focus on what makes them good at their job. And it keeps them sharp. But when you fail to do it, now you're that cost, you're just transferring that cost back to them when they thought they'd offloaded it. Uh, maybe that's a little bit out there. But again, Seth, Seth Godin, like you said earlier, is just so phil philosophical with the way that he approaches things. He, you can take it in multiple ways. Well, it, this reminded me that if unexpected events in the work where you're doing happen to you more than the average let's call it the expected rate, right? If you end up being better at finding excuses for why things have happened than a way to avoid needing an excuse, then those are signs that you probably would, would do well to have a more int intentional approach to how you do your work and how you approach the projects. Because, I mean, let's be honest, we're, most of us in business, we're fairly unsophisticated at, at the project management, but it is a skill that can be learned. And, you know, if you're an analytical person, I think you can 
you can analyze and then reboot and deliver with the strategy and technique that's going to improve the outcome, limit the surprises, 